Yeah, well, the the brain, and in particular the human brain, is the most complex structure we know of in the universe. It's incredibly uh, complicated. It has hundreds of billions of cells, you know, perhaps a hundred billion or so neurons, and perhaps five to ten times as many of another kind of cell called a glial cell or class of cells. And all of these, perhaps up to a trillion cells, are interconnected and interacting in various extremely complex ways. Uh, despite the fact that we have learned a lot about the brain over the last few decades, and uh, you can read sexy articles in Time magazine and elsewhere about how much we know about the brain and see all kinds of pretty pictures about the brain, uh, it really is mostly still a mystery. Uh, and uh, the complexity of it uh, really prevents any easy uh, answer to much of what's going on in there at this point. And w But we do know that one of the things that does happen in the brain is that Cells talk to each other in part through chemical signals. Uh, cells release specific chemical substances, which have been called, come to be called neurotransmitters, uh, examples of which are well known molecules like serotonin and dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, glutamate, and so forth. Uh, and then these signal, signaling molecules diffuse from one cell to the next, and they bind to specific protein structures that are in the downstream cell that are called receptors, and the neurotransmitter interacts structurally with the receptor, causes the receptor to change in shape in some way, and then that shape change is propagated in the, in the cell uh, through some kind of internal chemistry to do various other kinds of complicated biochemical things inside the cell, or perhaps open channels and cause electrically charged ions to move through and change the electrical potential. So there are a number of different ways that the signaling can be uh, can, can have effects on the on the cells, uh, and this is one of the main ways, if not the main way, that cells communicate with each other in the in the brain. And uh, recently, as I mentioned, the, these trace amine receptors were discovered as a new kind of neurotransmitter receptor. Well, new, a new kind of receptor that presumably responds to endogenous neurotransmitters, uh, and it was found that. Things that were already known, like dopamine and serotonin and so forth, really didn't have any effect at these receptors of significance. However, other molecules, which were known to occur in very small or trace amounts, like DMT uh, or other amines like topamine and tyramine and so forth, uh, do have uh, potent activating effects at these receptors. So it provides a means by which a whole another class of molecules that hadn't been appreciated in the past as neurotransmitters now can uh, be elevated to the, to the status of neurotransmitter.